morning, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Isn't it a wonderful privilege to know that we are in Christ? We have all those wonderful promises that are absolutely certain. Nothing else in this world is certain except the promises of God. Praise His name. The title today was going to, well, it's going to be God Only Knows. I'm not going to talk about a Beach Boy song either. I recently attended a tribute event hosted by a good friend of mine from Israel, Joel Kessler, and I was asked to sing. And don't worry, I'm not going to sing this morning. I was asked to sing a song by this chap who the tribute was for called God Only Knows. I'm not sure whether the person in question was a believer in the Lord, but through his songs, he and many other performers over the, the decades have, well, they've grappled constantly with trying to make sense of this world and all the pain and the suffering and the things that go wrong. And this particular singer, songwriter, he chose one of his songs to be called God only knows, and it seems to be very out of character for this man. As he looked back in his life and all those things that were thrown at him. And he basically came down at the end and said, well, I just can't make it all out. We've said the same things, I'm sure. I don't understand why all this is happening. Why the misery? Why the suffering? And at the end, it just says, well, God only knows. And I believe in his own way, he was sincere. And it's true that this life can offer everyone even those who are non-believers, they can offer a measure, a measure of joy and peace and excitement, beauty and fulfillment. There's a measure. But there, that's all it is, sadly. It's a measure. It's a fleeting time of mixed experiences which never, never, ever satisfy the longing soul. But the big question is, when we make a statement such as, God only knows, is it merely a throwaway comment? Or will that statement literally throw us upon the Lord God Almighty with a sincere heart and say, well, Lord, I don't understand it all. Please make sense of it. We must all come to the Lord Jesus like a child in all our confusion and all our worries and say, Jesus, I am done with it all. I'm fed up with trying to work it all out. Please, please come into my life. I can't do it on my own. And friends, this morning, God's omniscience, His all-knowing power, does not miss one word or one thought that we have. Not one thought, not one word. And this is very challenging, I'm sure, to us all. But better still, this truth that God knows everything 
is a blessing. It's reassuring and very, very comforting. And I'm sure we've all experienced that. To know that God knows all about it. All about it. To know him, the Lord of all creation, who is greater than our biggest problem we'll ever face. That's good. To know him who knows more about us than we know ourselves. Psalm 139, 1 to 4 says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my goings out and my lying down. You are familiar in all my ways. Before a word is even on my tongue, you know it completely. Isn't that wonderful? God only knows all things. Right now, right now, the Lord Jesus Christ knows how you and I are feeling. The person next to you perhaps has no idea, perhaps sees a smiling face and all manner of emotions will be inside, you're bottling it up. But only the Lord actually knows right now how you and I are feeling. He is fully aware of all our current difficulties, our pain, our anguish, and we have come to his house to worship his name. Because in all that pain and that worry and concern, there is no better place to be than in his presence. Yet somehow we still haven't shared it with anybody, but God knows. The big and the small decisions we need to make, he knows all about it already. Our insecurities, our uncertainties, our fears, our joys, our wrong actions and our good ones. Those niggly little worries we have about pain and discomfort in our bodies. He knows right now everything about it. And if you're undertaking, like I do at times, overwhelming grief and heartache, he knows. Our Lord wants to reassure, reassure us today from his word that he alone fully knows all about it. Whether you're a believer or a seeker today, may we all afresh place our lives in the hands of him who created all things, him who sees all and knows all. There's no better person, is there? And consider this a moment, just this little thought. You may have never thought about this before concerning our Lord. Our Lord has never discovered anything. Have you ever thought of that before? Our Lord, God Almighty, our Saviour has never discovered anything. Our Lord never forgets anything. Yet, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, co-creator of heaven and earth, He loves us. Each one in this room and me, He loves us. He loves us, His creation. And once above all, to have a two-way relationship with each of us. The question again we have to ask, do you have that relationship with the Lord God Almighty? Are you still 
on the outside looking in. Psalm 3, 9, verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. And over the years, there has been many sci-fi sci films where someone, all of a sudden, has the ability to know what somebody else is thinking. You've perhaps seen, they're a bit of fun. It's fiction. They've been able to hear what someone's thinking. And I, although that the idea is only pretend and, it, and it's good entertainment, if there was such an ability for someone, a human being, to be able to do that, you can be absolutely certain that gift would be abused. They would use it for personal gain or even blackmail. But what about our Lord? He's not fiction, it's a fact. We can be absolutely confident that our Lord, who loved us even when we sinned against Him, He loved us so much, He went to the cross and died in our place and gloriously rose again and now is seated at the right hand of the Father. And He will, as our brother said earlier, He will come again. Our Lord Jesus knows all, and because of who he is, he cannot, this is wonderful, our Lord who knows everything, he cannot act unjustly. It's impossible. He cannot act spitefully. He cannot do anything for selfish gain. Our one true God knows all, which means simply he will always use his omniscience, his all-knowing power, for perfect good and in our very best interest. Isn't that a wonderful truth for all those in Christ? Let's briefly look at some scripture which speaks of how our Lord knows all about our condition and his very best remedy for that. That is our needs, not our wants. Psalm 139 verses 13 to 16 reads, which us has just recently read. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know them full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Verse 13 For you created, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. So, firstly, God has created, He has possessed. He has, he has acquired, he has set up, he has put into place our inmost being, our intricate mind, our nervous systems, everything that gives us life, seen and unseen, and this is all down to the Lord, our Saviour, our coming King. The one who knits us all together as we grow in our mother's womb. He alone knows all things. This is a lovely reminder for us all to come to our Lord Jesus 
daily for all our needs. And I know if we're in like me, we don't always do what's best for us. Needs, all our needs, including those for our bodies. Psalm 139 verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Our frames he knows all about. This is the Hebrew word otzeb, means our bones, our very frame. We're not hidden from the Lord when he made us in the secret place, the place where God alone wove us together. It says, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. This poetic woven together in the depths of the earth is the Lord God Almighty through the psalmist David telling us that the secret place where you and I were woven together is as dark and as secret as the deep caverns beneath the earth. It's wonderful poetry, isn't it? Unseen by human eye where God works his divine power of creation. Isn't that wonderful? And people say there is no God. <laughs> and again, our Lord knows all about our weaknesses. Have you got any weaknesses? I have. We can be totally transparent before Him because there is no point, absolutely no point, in trying to conceal anything from our Lord who knows all and sees all. This is not a negative point. We must, have, we must get that into our hearts. It's not negative to know that God is watching every move. He knows all about us. It's a positive blessing for every child of God. Psalm 103, 14, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Friends, our Lord knows our frame. He knows our formation. He knows all our purposes, all our intentions. He knows all about them. Nothing escapes our Lord. And yes, he formed us. But we are a fallen people who are inclined to do wrong. We are inclined to disobey what God desires for us. He knows how we are formed. It's the Hebrew word called Yetzer. He knows all about our inclinations. That's basically Yetzer. Our inclinations. Inclinations to do good and inclinations to do bad. And I know if we're all being honest, Sometimes we say something wonderful in one breath and say something hypercritical in the worst way possible in the next breath. Even in modern Jewish thought, Yetzer, Yetzer means the evil and the good inclination of the human heart. That wasn't my human heart beating there, by the way. They would say Yetzahara and Yetzahatov. In other words, we're saying we're inclined the evil and we're inclined also the good. Nothing changes. As Solomon said, nothing is new under the sun. Friends, we need our Lord Jesus every day. 
we need God's Holy Spirit to help us every day to stay on track, to stay in the will of the Lord rather than do our own thing and go by our own thoughts and actions. It's quite a challenge, isn't it? It's very virtuous to say, my goal as a Christian is to do more good than bad. But what is the reality? We cannot achieve anything of any worth without God's input in our lives. We are hopeless without the law. He alone is all powerful. He alone is all seeing. He alone is all knowing. He alone is all loving. He alone is all holy. As the Apostle Peter confessed, who else can we go to? We can moan and groan about our lot, but deep down, I was discussing that with Maureen, wasn't I, earlier? We can moan and groan about our lot, and even as Christians, but at the end of the day, we say, well, who else can we go to? Our Lord has all the answers. Our Lord is the son of the living God. And again, Psalm 1394, before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. Well, that's a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> How many of us speak words idly? Even before it's on our tongue, even, even before we verbalize it, he knows it, he knows all about it. Even a thought, not even spoken. Our Lord and Saviour knows it all. And I say to you this morning, that's not an imposition, that's a blessing. Psalm 1393, you discern my going out and my lying down. Our Lord and Saviour knows our every step. He knows every step we take. He knows about it even before we take it. Our every route that we make and go on, even when we change direction, he knows about it. From our waking to our sleeping. And yes, even the journeys we make in our dreams, he's aware of it. Isn't that wonderful? That's comforting, not an imposition. It's not an invasion as the world would call it, it's an invasion of privacy. Oh no, it's a wonderful, wonderful blessing and comfort for all in Christ Jesus that our Lord knows all. Friends, we in Christ Jesus, we're so blessed. May we rejoice anew that our Lord knows everything, but never, never uses his unmatched power for wrongful gain. Isn't that wonderful? And we can be sure of that. May I remind you of an old phrase used for fellow humans who think they know more than everybody else. We've much met a few. Old know it all. When you last hear that one, oh, him over there, he's old, he's old know it all. He knows everything. Let us briefly consider the so called knowledge of mankind with all its boasts and academic levels. But God's word tells us clearly in 1 Corinthians 3 18 to 19, he say, it says there, do not deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. When we evaluate our knowledge by the standards of this world, 
there will always be a tendency for us to overestimate ourselves and think we're super duper. And by doing so, we're leaving God out of our lives. When God's word becomes our measure, our standard, not the world, or our academic levels, when God becomes our standard, we have a mighty leveller in our lives. He levels things out and he, he makes us realise how great he is and how dependent we are on him. Compared to our all-knowing Lord, our highest wisdom, which is the Greek word sophos, it's about intellect and insight, our greatest intellect and insight in all things is merely, it says, foolishness in God's sight. And what is foolishness there? It's the Greek word moros. And we get the English word moronic. So don't be too, don't, don't be too upset by that. But compared with our Lord who knows everything, we shouldn't think too highly of ourselves where we leave him out. He says, your highest achievement is moronic compared with me. He's a great leveller, isn't he? <laughs> and again, we have all heard and may have used the term ourselves in the past in flippant ways. Ah, God knows. Have you ever heard that one? Ah, God knows. And this can be said as a confident statement by a believer and also a statement of frustration from a non-believer. But when a believer can say with a real conviction how wonderful that is, God knows all. God knows it. Why do I strive? God knows it all. And coming back to those who claim to be super intelligent and far above all their peers, consider the reality for these wise people compared to the Lord. A chap called Dan Rockwell offers this short list for how to spot, how to spot it, a know-it-all person. How to spot a know-it-all person. One, their life is a mess, but they keep telling others how to live theirs. Have you ever had that? Two, they seldom take advice. Three, they judge quickly. Four, they can always do it better even when they have never done it before themselves. Five, they talk more than they listen. Six, they expect more from others than they expect from themselves. Some of these things might be ringing in our own personal lives. That's fine. Seven, they haven't failed big time for at least four years. Wow. They got bigger, didn't they? <laughs> this is just a small list. Psalm 31, 14 to 15. I trust you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. And when we put our trust in the Lord, we also put our times into his divine hand. Our times in our life is the Hebrew word eth, eth. It means our appointed times, all the circumstances, all the seasons in our life that have been, that are happening now and will happen. Our fortunes, whether they're good or bad. Every occurrence, every occasion, every event of our life, this is F in Hebrew. 
And it tells us in Psalm 31, 14 and 15, that our Lord God Almighty and Saviour has all that, all that of our lives in his hand. He is aware of every event that will take place. And again, the world may see this as intrusive and an invasion of privacy. But I say this morning in Christ Jesus, we should say praise God that God knows it all. Because that to me is security, that is comfort. All our lives, every circumstance is within it, are in our Saviour's hand. Friends, we're so privileged to know Jesus, Yeshua, and to have the blessed assurance that he has all our lives in his hand, and that he is ultimate security. The question again today is, do you believe that for yourself? Are you a believer? Are you a seeker? Do you know Jesus in that way? Where your security is in his power, his omniscience, his omnipotence. All that God is, is your security. Your trust is in him alone, ultimately. Do you have that assurance in your life? How is all this possible? And the answer is that the Lord alone, He is eternal. And again in Psalm 139, 23, Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Test me, and know my anxious thoughts. And like the Psalmist David, are we also willing to ask our Lord to search our very being? Although actually we don't need he doesn't need our, 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 um, we don't, he doesn't need our permission, does he? Are we willing and sincerely willing to ask, Lord, search me, search my heart. We know it is thought, it's, it's absolutely futile to think for one second we can conceal anything from our Lord. But the act of asking shows a true desire to our Lord that we want to receive correction and direction as He wills it. He knows our hearts and all His ways are perfect towards His children. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Again, it is a good thing to always be truly open. For our Lord to test and try us, to prove us, to scrutinize our lives. And why? 20 verse 24 tells us, to see if there be any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The Psalmist David is inviting God into his innermost thoughts and asking God to alter, to change his perspective on life. To see things truly the way God sees it. And that should be our prayer every day. Lord, change the way I view life. I want to see life and the way I go forward in a way which is consistent with your will more and more. We all know we're going to let him down, but we should be looking to him to go forward rather than stagnate. Because if we stagnate as Christians, we will drop back. We have a wonderful God. A wonderful, wonderful God. And I finish. Friends, we in Christ Jesus, we know that he sees all, he knows all. He alone can keep us to that great day that's coming soon when he returns. 
May we seek to give over to him all those areas of our lives which we struggle to let go of. We've all got them. Make no mistake, I do speak to myself here, I always do. And I hope that comes over. There's many things we all need to give over to the Lord so that he can bless and use us more. Verse 24, Lord, lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, lead me. Not us, the Lord, lead me. And that's the Hebrew word, nacha. Lord, guide me. Lord, govern me. Bring me. Lead me forth. That's the actual idea behind nacha. It means that the Lord is at the front leading us, and that's the way we want it. That's the way our hearts should be crying out to God, saying, Lord, I don't want to be before you. I don't want you to be putting you in a closet. I want you to lead me, Nakar. I want you to go before me as the great shepherd of my life. We go back to Psalm 23, verse 1, and we finish. The Lord is my shepherd. We've all said that a million times. From here to eternity, may we all see Jesus before us. That should be our desire. Before us, at the helm of our lives. And in everything we do, our all-knowing Lord, he's the one who holds the future. A true shepherd always leads. The true shepherd always puts himself between us and the enemy. The greatest shepherd, Jesus, in the Greek called the Archipoimen, he will bring us all in him safely home, his flock. He knows all and he knows his sheep. Let us pray. Our Lord and Saviour, He knows everything. He knows about you and I this morning. He knows all those who are not fully in Him yet, all those who are seeking, all those asking questions. Even the believer today who have things to let go, we all have things to let go. May we use this opportunity to just raise up holy hands and give ourselves afresh to him in service for him, that he may be able to use us better, more effectively. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, you're asking questions. Come to him now and cry out to him in your heart. Say, Lord, I submit to you, forgive me. And come into my life and make sense of it all, because you know all about me. I can be real in your presence. And if we're believers today, say, Lord, I want to serve you better, but Lord, help me to give up all those things which hinder my walk. Lord, we praise your holy name for who you are. You never change. You are wonderful. Amen.